Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Linux First Impressions. Today we're going to be looking at a different type of Linux distribution. Today we are looking at Point Linux, which is a Debian bare bones flavor. According to the distro watch, this flavor originates in Russia. It's pretty small, there's not much to it. This is 13.04.1 and it is running Mate. As we take a quick look here, applications were very little. You know, simple things is what you're typically used to seeing for accessories, graphics, no GIMP, internet, Firefox came standard. It did have Thunderbird for your email. Office was LibreOffice. Now the programming I installed so that I could get Simple Screen Recorder working and in the video section I installed the GUCV and the Simple Screen Recorder. It did come with VLC. Oh, I also installed Clementine so I could play with the music. I did play with this version a little bit longer to see about the stability of it. And then of course your typical system setups and because it is Mate has that typical uh, GNOME 2 look to it with your places and your system areas right here. The GUI interface was very simple, easy to understand. The installation went very well. No headaches whatsoever, no hiccups. Uh, it gave me a choice, of course, to install Grub or not to install Grub, which is always nice. It's, it's good that a lot more distributions are considering the fact that a lot of people trying out the Linux distribution have more than one Linux distro on their system and may not want to mess up their grub configuration or if they use a Linux loader because if you already have one set up it's a lot easier to just put a new entry into it so that it can boot to the new uh, partition and to your different distribution. In my case, I think I've mentioned many times, I have two hard drives in my laptop. The, hard, the first hard drive is the original hard drive that came with the system which is just a 500 gig that houses, uh, as I embarrassingly always, embarrassingly always say, it still has Windows 7 because, let's face it, no matter what you do, there's always going to be that one time that you require to go into Windows to do something. Whether that's an application that just doesn't have a Linux port, uh, a good example. I use a Logitech Harmony remote. I'm able to get rid of seven or eight remotes and use that. The application to program it is internet based. However, you must have Windows to install the Harmony software to be able to get to that, to be able to configure it and use it. Necessary evil. They don't have a Linux version. I don't foresee them ever coming out with a Linux version. So sometimes you just have to hold on to Windows just for those little things. Another thing that I like to do within Windows is there's a really great internet site for old games from the late 80s, early 90s, and that's called uh, goodoldgames.com or gog.com. If you go to gog.com, and this is an advertisement. This is just something I'm throwing out there because it's a main use of why I keep around the Windows 7 partition. They've written a lot of games so that they work really well within ScumVM or, or the VirtualBox. Uh, not VirtualBox, I'm sorry. DOSBox. And they're fun to play. They remind me of the old... I have all the Sierra games from the Space Quest series, King's Quest series, Quest for Glory series, all those sort of things. I love playing those things in my spare time, if I've got spare time. But that's why I, I keep it around, hold on to it. Now back to the other thing, I then have a second hard drive, which is just a 320 gig hard drive, that I split, have split up into four partitions. The first partition is for um, memory allocation. The second, third, fourth is for 
Linux partitions, such as my first partition is a main is the main one with Gen 2, which is my master partition. My second one right now currently has uh, Linux Mint and a very old version of it. I think Linux Mint 11. I would like to wipe that out, do something else with it. And this third partition, which I have right now, Point Linux, which is what I call my guest OS. And whatever I want to install, I throw into there, and I allow Gen2 to manage all of them. It's very helpful to allow me to try different things out, because as I've said many times, I don't like throwing things into VirtualBox unless it's a last resort. Although recently I have been testing out a few different Linux server type distros that are meant to be in VirtualBox. And it's kind of interesting using VirtualBox for a virtual server and using the pass through with the network so that it still gets its own IP address but looks like it's here. looks like a server that's running outside of a, a laptop. And that's been kind of interesting to check out. Back to Point Linux though. Uh, very nice, very clean, very crisp. Installation as I said went very well. Uh, things seem to run very um, stable on this flavor. Uh, I have tested a few different updates. One nice thing about this flavor and that is a lot of times I've tested Linux and the power features are kind of wonky I've had issues, for instance, in the past with the sleep function working or hibernate function working, that sort of thing. I've noticed with this that sleep seems to work flawlessly, and as soon as I open it up, get it running again, network reconnects itself. That's another big thing. A lot of times it'll come out of sleep, I've noticed in some distributions, and then your network never runs again and you have difficulty until you pretty much just reboot the system to get it going which defeats the purpose in my opinion of being able to use a sleep or hibernate function so it's nice to see that those things are working as I said this is based off of Debian and it's based off of the sta stable version of it I believe it's Wheezy at this time no frills no uh, you know no eye candy to say but simple strong and reliable and that's what's most important, of course. Uh, I did check out out-of-the-box type features, such as whether or not YouTube worked, and whether or not videos would play. And we'll just play this quick commercial here, USAA. That's enough of that. Worked without a problem. Been using it actually for just about a full week actually. Trying out different things. Seeing how well it, it would uh, run. Used the, since I had to install the Qt uh, software programming stuff here, it was kind of fun to play with the Qt designer and the creator and create some boxes and some simple programs that I could compile. Qt is, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Qt, it's the language and GUI uh, software development for KDE, whereas when you're in GNOME, it's using the GDK, which is the GNOME toolkit. It's, so that's what I needed to get so that Simple Screen Recorder would work. And I have, since I've been told about Simple Screen Recorder, have really been impressed with how well Simple Screen Recorder works. In every distro that I have done since I was first told about it, maybe about six, seven distros ago, I've been very happy with it. It's sometimes been a little bit difficult to install. For instance, with installing it with this, I had to constantly keep finding out which packages I still needed to get installed using Synaptics, and that brings me to the next thing. Within this, it uses the Synaptics Package Manager which is easy to find if you go into administration you find right here Synaptics Package Manager you click on it uh, I sometimes get confused it's interesting some distributions when you want to, when they want you to log in as super user they don't want you to put in this the super user or the root account password they want you to put in your password because it sets you up as as an administrator of the system so other distributions always require you to put in the root password, so I'm constantly try one, nope, try the other, yep, there we go. The um, 
Synaptic Package Manager, as many of you are probably aware of and used to seeing since it's uh, pretty well known, it's simple to use. You can go into the settings, into the preferences, and you can set up your, you know, how you want packages to be removed, upgraded, etc. You can go in here and find different settings on how you connect them to the internet, etc. There's also a place in here where you can go in and set up your locations to where your rep repos are set up. And after using this, looking for different things, simple quick filter as you can see right there, I was able to find all the pieces that I needed so that Simple Screen Recorder would compile because there's no package for Simple Screen Recorder. It's still a um, package that you have to download the source code for and compile it. But that's a very simple feature. You know, there are three main commands that you always need to know when compiling code. The first is configure. Configure goes through, looks for all the dependencies that might be in that, that source code, and checks your system to make sure that you have it and it's available. That's where you find where a lot of things might be missing, and you just look up, find out where it errors out and says, checking for blah 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 and then you go oh okay um, says no let's go look for it sometimes it's not always that intuitive sometimes you have to kind of alright well it says this but that's not what you need to search for and you kind of have to sometimes you do a Google search on it and it'll tell you oh yeah that's pat that that particular uh, header file is found in this package so then you go and find that fact that package within the synaptics package manager install it rerun dot slash configure again inside that directory it goes through it'll hopefully find that move on to the next one and then tell you something else if it's all successful it'll go ahead and create the make files that need to be compiled and tell you, then, you know, pretty much spit you back out let's say it's all successfully configured you then type in make and then the make command goes through and creates everything that you, it needs to go through and do and then the last step is something you need to do as super user because that's where it installs all the files but the more they need to go and sets everything up so that you can use that application on the system and that command is normally sudo if you don't like to go into your super user account space make install if everything is successful you have got the program installed and running you know, that's a very simple way to do it within Debian and other distributions. That's what I like so much about Gen 2. When installing stuff, you pretty much have a package and you can use the emerge and portage tree. And you just have a simple emerge command which does the configure, make, make install all for you. Which is a great way to do it. So that is Point Linux in a nutshell. I'm going to try to keep these shorter, so I'm getting really close to 14 minutes. So, I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed Point Linux. My goal, if you're following along, is unless I have someone who specifically says, I really want you to look at this distribution and give me your opinion of it, I'm going to try to take random distributions that I find on the distro watch, like right here. I'm at Point Linux, just kind of remind myself where the point of origin was but that's how I found Point Linux. I just went up here and I started looking down here and said hey let's look to see what's been the latest that's been updated. In fact maybe next week I'll do Puppy Linux. I'm not sure but I'm just gonna look out here and see what I can find. I don't want to get stuck on one specific distribution over another and start doing you know all Debian's or all Arch or like I did all a whole bunch of Slackware all at once I kinda wanna jump around and just kinda throw stuff out there I wanna do 52 weeks of Linux that pretty much showcases 52 different flavors I don't want to repeat I'm gonna try my best not to repeat I had a subscriber ask me if I had checked out Sabayon 13.08 and I looked and I said okay well my review was on 13.04 I don't want to do another distribution on 1308 because it's so close to that package ID. I just want to try different things and try to have 52 unique flavors out there. Sad thing about that is if an, a package has a really cool update 
I don't want to go back to it at least until after the 52 weeks because I want 52 weeks of unique Linux. So if you guys have any suggestions or if there's something within the videos you would like me to touch on or discuss, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, as I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy my videos. I thank you for your comments. I thank you for the fact that you just watch them and support me. I don't get anything from this. I, you know, I, I refuse to do any monetization of my videos. You say, oh, yeah, like you could do anything with 70 views and 50 views. and I know. For the, I think some of my videos have up to 10,000 views. Most of them have 100 to 200. Not too many. Sometimes they'll shoot up to 1,000. It's not worth the monetization. Besides that, I don't want to bombard you guys with commercials and or, or anything else. Yeah. I'm here not to do this to make money. I'm here just to do this because I enjoy Linux. I enjoy giving you guys information and and bringing things to the table that normally you'd never have thought to look at, such as Point Linux or Puppy Linux or, or well, SUSE is pretty well known, but I mean, how many people, for instance, if you look down here, they're, okay, Sabiona, <laughs> here, here, Open Indiana, or like when I did the uh, Uber student, I mean, I just happened to run into Uber student and thought, hey, this looks pretty neat, I'm going to do this, or this one here, Tails, you know, or Porteous. I did look at GNuSense. I was going to do a video on that. However, GNuSense is really quite interesting. It's Debian and Ubuntu based. However, it's really stuck on open source free drivers only. They did not have a driver for the um, the wireless card. They didn't have a drive, so I couldn't get on there and be able to do updates. And, and get things running or get software and so I gave up on G new sense but yeah this is just where I'm gonna look and start trying to find things so again thank you I've now shot up to 17 minutes I better shut up so I can close this <laughs> y'all have a great one we'll talk to you later thank you very much for watching bye